it was is it actually was what was going on it was in time, South yeah. London in Brixton there with those people doing that and what it was is they made people privy to it they became the poets for that demographic and they did it properly and uh, basically come home one day and it's got this this like little valve thing and this what old wooden wire gall speakers there's your amplifier and I put it in, it was the most distorted, violent, <laughs> disgusting. It was amazing. It was like, wow. Um, and it was unbelievable. It blew my head off. Because it was live and it felt live. Because it was just like, people just go, <laughs> just out of their heads. Absolutely. And it, that was really, that was a big influence, really. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about no fuck now, away. Anyone, was anyone. Uh, viewing this, really taking that little uh, metaphor seriously, you know. Uh, listen, it's more like it's more like we sort of go one, two, three, and we yeah. start at the same time. It's it. like the reason you have to keep doing that. The reason you have to keep doing it is because you forgot. Where, where's he going? Like, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Oh, listen, listen, right? no, no, let me look. Okay. follow the point. Follow the point. Really, you'll get it. You'll get it, guys. Right. All right. All right. Lights, camera, action in the back of the cab this week. We have an absolute beast. It was uh, absolutely unbelievable on the uh, on the flute. We've got Nathan flute box in the back. We saying, how you doing? And we've also got Chandra Sonic from Asian Dub Foundation. How you doing, my man? We're very good. Very good indeed. Great, great to meet you both. And uh, you know, me and Nathan go back anyway, don't we, Nathan? That's right. So let, let, Nath, let's start with you then. So basically, you know, whereabouts are you from and what was it like growing up, you know, as a, as a youngster? Yeah, it was good. I really enjoyed it. I had a bike. Yeah. <laughs> I was young. No, it was good. I'm from London, from southwest London. And I, um, yeah, born in Notting Hill Gate. And, and Chandra Sonic, where are you from, my man? Well, originally Southall. Oh, you're from Southall? Yeah, West London. Well, I grew up, I, I spent my childhood in Southall. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and then, uh, then moved to... The sort of place called Uxbridge, which you know. Oh, then you moved out to like Uxbridge, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then I'm I'm, I'm south now. I know you uh, moved south east, didn't you? Mm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but um, we're playing again. We've been playing. Wait, how long have you been in the band now? You know, God, I've been in I've been in Asian Dog Foundation for quite a few years now. Yeah, you man. have. It was about yeah, full time yeah. from eight years ago. Yeah, wasn't it? yeah. So how, how did you guys hook up? Um. We kind of just kind community. Of just, it was like, uh, yeah, it was kind of like same we kind of people, because yeah, we were just in the same circle. I don't actually remember the first time I met Nathan. It just, yeah, just felt like likewise. I knew Nate. Yeah, yeah, Nate yeah. Do you know just what I mean? Around. What, yeah. what? Did you hear about Nate with his with his flute box? No, of course. Yeah. No, I was a fan yeah. actually. Uh, I think the moment right. I heard him, I yeah. really loved that band. Before he, he started doing stuff with Asian Dub, occasional tracks and stuff. But I was actually going to all, all those, loads of those gigs. I yeah, saw. Steve used to come to my gigs, but also yeah. I, I was a big fan of Asian Dub Foundation as well. Yeah. So, so what did uh, Chandra? Did you go, did you go up to Nathan and say, do you want to come down and have a little session in, in the studio and basically kick mm, it off? No, it was, it was more organic. Sanchez, more, wasn't it, wasn't it? But it was kind but, of so more organic than that. Yeah, though, you really. know, it's funny. It, didn't it really, really kind of like just that. like. It just slow morphing. It's just slow. You know, it's just. Uh, it was no kind of moment of. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's quite happens. interesting. I never. Do you know? I never really thought about it before. But it's like you kind of just. We just kind of merged into yeah, the group. I, didn't, I didn't get jumped in as such. Yeah, you know, no. I just, uh, there was no like we yeah. go out for a bit and you know here's the contract. It was just. It just just kind of happened. And, yeah, and then we. And, and, yeah. And, and, yeah. and you become you be, become one. Yeah, yeah, we've done a lot of stuff as well. You think about it. Yeah. The, 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 the live soundtracks. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, Japan and America. Yeah. And, you know. Like, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're, you know, your lot. music, Asian Dub Foundation, is very kind of all sorted, kind of dubby, kind of you know, feel to it. It's got a kind of, uh, you know, it kind of covers quite a few different styles of uh, of dub. Yeah, well, it's 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 kind of it's kind of. To be honest, it's more sort of punky jungle was the original thing. Oh, was it? You got the dub, you got the dub, so the dub bass, but you also got originally when we started, it was really like fast jungleist breakbeats, plus the South Asian stuff on top. So Ch Chandra, who was basically like inspiring you back in the day? I mean, was was you was you kind of was you brought up on like you know hip hop or? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I was brought up on a lot of things actually. You know, mm. I've got very interesting. My parents uh, both passed, uh, bless them, but my parents were actually real music fans and they're a very unusual couple. 
you know, it's an Indian guy and uh, a very white English, very working class woman, you know, and, you know, quite an unusual couple. But they're both massive music fans. So they're like in the late 50s, like their first dates were like Ravi Shankar, the sitar yeah, player yeah, at yeah. Royal Festival Hall. Amazing. And Buddy Holly at the London Palladium. So we all kind of... Yeah, so, so, so I mean, just those two alone, Allegedly. you can see what, you know, I'm a guitarist playing in a, in a kind of Indian orientated punky jungle dub thing. You could see the line that would go from Ravi Shankar and Buddy Holly yeah, to, yeah, that, yeah, to yeah, that, with yeah, a few yeah. things on the way. But it's a, thrown in, yeah. It's a good, it's a nice, nice starting point. I, I, I owe them a lot for that actually. And you I, know. Um, you know, I listen to some of that kind of Bangra sound, and I'm yeah. honest with you, you know, some of them beats were amazing. Yeah, they were. Now we actually did, uh, we did incorporate a bit of Bangra into the band uh, over in certain points, and, and we kind of, I kind of, I remember we worked on a couple of like. We wanted to do a really tough bang bungalow that wasn't like all kind of smiles and yeah, fun yeah, yeah. dancing that you laugh at and take the piss out of, you know. Uh, but I actually think that bungalow's got a real, real tough core. Oh, big, big, big A time. real hardcore. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of presented, I think, to most people as as quite lightweight and fun, you know. I was, I was, Which it is, but you know, well, one, you know, it, 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 you can really do it dark style if you if you try. You know? Oh, you can. Yeah. I mean, I, I was listening to some like bang or some breaks in the uh, in in the percussion. Yeah. And I was going to sample that years ago yeah. in a, a hip hop track. Cause yeah. Well, there's been quite a bit of that actually. Yeah. yeah there's a lot. I mean, that, that got sampled very, very, very early on actually. I mean, the eighties. Up in Birmingham, actually, we were just, yeah. uh, you know, um, there was this um, Oriental Star Company and, and also Saint Records, it was called. And they did like, they were doing Bangla hip hop, right in like 1987, 88 and stuff. Yeah, back then. One, a really famous album was made up there, and it's basically a hip hop uh, remix of a famous uh, it's a type of music from Pakistan called Kawali. Mm. Which is really kind of devotional, but really exciting music, and you were getting hip hop remixes of that, like in the wow. mid eighties, you know. So who who was who was inspiring you? I mean, you know, back in the early days. Uh, let's go to you, Nathan. Actually, who was inspiring you uh, musically wise? You was obviously down with the uh, the old school hip hop thing, isn't it? Oh yeah. So who who, who, who was you loving in the old school uh, hip hop? Well, for me, for 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 UK hip hop at that period, there's only one name and that name's Rodney P and, and when he was when he was London when he was London Posse mm. with Bionic and the, the pair of them together amazing for me were like yeah yeah that that's I, I, I think they would have, I, I think I think because they were they were doing it properly it was is it actually was what was going on it was in time, South yeah. London in Brixton there with those people doing that and what it was is they made people privy to it they became the poets for that demographic and they did it properly and they yeah. were the first yeah no That's they, they were they were absolutely wicked i think and how about a lot on the u.s side any any u.s like yeah New York step side? into the arena uh guru gangster which was you know uh, he, i thought he was one of the best and i had a chance to i had a chance to play with him as well before he died which was also which was also really nice Let's go back to the beatboxing because I mean you you know you're an absolute beast of a beatboxer. Oh, you know well. I mean you're absolutely incredible. What what you do with your mouth? I mean you know I, I I grew up back in I started doing it when I was kind of it must have been 14 or 15, 84, 85. Uh, Bismarcky, Danny yeah. Fresh, yeah Bismarcky, my, Michael, um, oh, the guy from um, Police Academy when he started. They called him the man with 10,000 sounds. <laughs> oh yeah, I love, yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, what was his name? Michael uh, Win Winslow, Michael Winslow. That's right, but he had a, he had a nickname as well. He had a, like yeah. a, like, like a name that it was, he had a cool name. He was like, he was great. And he was also in a, in a movie called, I'm going to get you sucker. That's right, yeah. Which I he thought, which is brilliant. He plays a disciple Bruce Lee at one point in that but film. It's sort of comedy way. an amazing um, beatboxer. Yeah, he's incredible. But he, he did like, he did elephant noises. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I never even sit, don't even see myself as, you know, I, I, I just do what I do. Um, and with the flute, with, with what, with flute boxing, what it is, is 
It's new repertoire for the instrument. It's a new way to play the instrument. It's the Jimi Hendrix of the flute. Well, yeah. He is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not joking, right? Oh, he's amazing. The man has changed the instrument. He's oh, changed, he's amazing. changed oh, the man. possibilities of it. I mean, not just beatbox. His beatbox is amazing. But, you know, it does all this other stuff with it as well, like sound effects yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, and, yeah. And kind of, you can almost get a distort. This is why I say it's even more like Jimi Hendrix in today, because he, he actually distort the flute sound. That's what it's as much know? about, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's as much about the way the flute is messed up when you when you when you hit hit it hard. Yeah. When you hit it hard, and when you, because there's a whole avenue of sound on it which wasn't explored, and you can by just playing it with a bit of um, bit of a. Uh, it, it's the beauty. It's a bit of, a bit of you know, this beauty of being attracted to an instrument that people aren't normally attracted to, unless they kind of do it at school or mm. get into the orchestra. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Whereas say with guitar, I, you know, which is what I play, is, is like everyone could pick that up, yeah, that up yeah. and you can you can do your own thing. You can make a little noise. You don't even you don't have to be formal. That's right. But with an instrument like the flute, you normally have to be formal. Yeah, so yeah, what's yeah. unique about what Nathan's done? He's picked up the flute, which is not a flute that you pick up. Uh, usually by choice, you're usually forced to do it, you know, and go into a, a youth orchestra or something, and then you play it in classical music. He's picked up the flute, says, oh, I'm going to have a go at this. And he's turned it really into a different kind of instrument. He's moved the instrument yeah, yeah. somewhere else, and I and it's, I think now he's starting to get his props, actually. Thanks, yeah, man. Yeah, he yeah. started it. Yeah, it's no, been a long I mean, time coming, but he's starting to get props now. 100%. Maybe you Just only take feel, time. I feel yeah. I started the... Um, Mm. That way of doing it, and I feel I I I am the one doing you it did. with a proper ethos. I think yeah. now there's a lot of people doing it that are, are really good. Was, was you it, was you one of the first to pick the flute? I, up I was the first. So, so how, how did you come up with the idea to pick yeah. the flute to pick <laughs> to pick the flute up and start beatboxing through the flute? Because it's really unusual, isn't it? I mean, I've seen people doing it with, through the harmonica. I've tried it through the harmonica, beatboxing through a harmonica. But what made you want to pick the flute up? And beatbox through the flute. Probably just daft, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, but it, it, really, I do all kinds what, of stupid. Were you drunk one night and you see a flute in the corner and thought, oh, let's let's have a go at beatbox? What? Twenty years old? I was drunk every night. No, joking. No, 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 but no. listen, uh, he's not going to answer this question. I'm going to have to ask it for him, won't I? Yeah. Nave's half Tamil. Okay. Ah. Right. So, to someone, even subconsciously, the flute. If you're into hip hop, what have you? To Nathan, subconsciously, deep in his whatever, or I, I don't know whether it's conscious or subconscious, the flute is a massively important uh, Indian instrument. Yeah, right? but it's yeah, also yeah. it's you also know. it's also um. So I think that's got as much to yeah. do with it's it. It's also I suppose maybe that might have another element of um, I don't know, but it's because it's uh, I never looked at it as um, I just I like percussion, and I always just looked at it as a. Uh, as a percussion instrument as well. Yeah. You can have fun on it as a percussion instrument. That's what it is to me. So as well as it is a flute. I also like to play percussion. other things. Yeah. I'm, you yeah. know, just for fun, I like to try and play a bit of Bach and I like to try and play um, a bit of Vivaldi. And I, what, you know, what, with, without actually beatboxing through it? Oh, yeah, man. Oh, you of course like, not. No, I'm not right. going to beatbox for it. No, God, no. Um, you can play all the Indian rags as well. And I play. Yeah. I like to play. I like. To, I, like to, I like to play some some rag as well. well I'm quite. Mm. I'm quite quite excited to hear you play in the back of the cab and do a little kind of a little, give us a little taste. Yeah, mate. And and Chandra, how did you kind of um, you know how did you come up with your name actually, Chandra Sonic? Uh, yeah, it was, it was a, the bass player Asian Dub when we first met called me that because I was just really into. Anyway, this is why I love Nathan does because he's taken the instrument changed it and I haven't done anything approaching that because but but the, but the guitar I always saw it as a means to represent things I I've never interested in being a widdly diddly you know uh, solo I'm not interested in that I just like making unusual sounds with the guitar you know to the point where on some ADF records people say oh you're not playing on that track are you and I'll say yes I am that's me they go what wow. uh, that's a he sick. likes like he likes the direction of a small group work if you could look at it like that, it's it, in terms of like if you saw it as a as, as as that kind of thing. It's it's a it's a six seven piece unit you like with a kind of unison sound. You what, like the guitar? That. No, you like that dynamic when you when you when you're making music. You like that band dynamic. You yeah, like I do. That. Yeah, I don't, rather I, than a series of that's the way you th yeah. you think. I, 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 I think in groups and relationships. So I'm happy to play one chord every minute. If the, if it works in the track, you see what I mean. 
And what, what uh, made right. you want to pick the guitar up? I mean, was it? Was it was just very easy to do that then. Right. And, all, and I'll tell you why. Again, I, I owe this to my dad. You know, the, the more I get older, the realise the more you owe to them, right? Uh, I wanted a guitar and I got a Woolies one for about 20 quid. <laughs> what, 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 what worth it? Yeah, when I was about 14, I think. And um, But my dad, right, he, he was a charge hand electrician and a shop floor electrician. And uh, basically, he come home one day and he's got this this like little valve thing and this old wooden wire gauze speakers. So there's your amplifier. And I put it in, it was the most distorted, violent, <laughs> disgusting. It was amazing. I was like, uh, big friends would come around, I couldn't play the thing. People would just come out going, wow. <laughs> but I wasn't even playing it, it's just this right. sounded. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's just as soon as you just play one note, and it just sounded yeah. like some aircraft had just yeah, crashed yeah. through it. And, and then I went, I went to work, a summer job at the factory where my dad worked. And then I saw all the speakers. Round, round the factory, right? <laughs> it was like it was, it was the public announcement. Uh, the, the public announcement is uh, oh, that Foreman, Foreman Higgs, uh, go to the office, please. Right? That, that's why it sounded like so incredible. Oh, because you was... basically right, he'd, right. Take, he'd taken the works PA unit and and and, and nicked it and, and give it to, to get me a guitar amp. Yeah. See, that's what you call love. Yeah, oh, it is really, isn't it? Yeah, that's love, and it was man. amazing. And I think it's probably the way I play guitar is. It's because of that original sound. It's so, it's so evil and disgusting, right? It was just real, the real antipathy of what a, a good guitar sound should be. You know, did did you kind of self-teach yourself? Yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. Wow. The last thing you want to do, really, well, for me, he's, anyway, a, yeah, he's wicked. Man. The last thing you want to do is, is 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 try and copy other guitarists. The guitar is an instrument strangled by its own history, right? You know, you see, it, it's even worse now. You know, where everyone wants to play exactitude like somebody else, you know what I mean? But you see, well, the great thing is, is that when I got into Asian Dub Foundation, I'd given up guitar, I started programming, I got into acid house music. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where was you big going? acid house music. Where was you going clubbing? Was you going to a trip? Uh, well, actually, we went to some really, I, I kind of fell in with an interesting group, uh, which is where I met Dr. Das, who, who formed Asian Dub Foundation. And yeah, I got into the acid house stuff and things like that, but the ones I actually went to were very left field. There was actually live groups, right? Actually, they were bringing out the old synths and the, and the Ataris, right? They were bringing them out to raves. And right? doing it live? Yeah, no DJs. Wow. And that it was, was unbelievable. Live. It blew my head off. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. it was live and it felt live. Because it was just like, people just mm. going, Swish, Swish, just yeah. out of their heads. Swish. Absolutely. Yeah, and it, that was really, that was a big influence, really. Where, where, where was you going um, raving? Uh, it was mostly, where, where was, it was, it was one you probably haven't heard of. The actual night was called Fun D Mental. And the most famous people that were on it, Orbital used to play there. You right. remember Orbital? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, the they were amazing. The lights in the yeah, that's them. That's where they, they started, yeah. Yeah, Orbital. We yeah, I used to follow them round. We, yeah. we, 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 I, basically, I was in a band that had guitars and stuff, though we were a bit, we were, a bit we were kind of indie dance kind of thing, I suppose. And I just threw my, I, I left my guitar against the radiator and let it melt and just got into programming and stuff like that. So when I was asked to play guitar, which was a really bizarre thing to do, in what was like a, a reggae jungle band with sort of junglist MC in and then loads of Indian sounds, but it, they wanted me to play guitar, which I just, so I brought the one that was melted, you know. <laughs> and I just thought, and I thought, well, I don't want to play. If I'm playing over a jungle spray beat, I want to go with it. I don't want to like put myself in the middle and be some wang. So I kind of worked out a style that kind of works with like hip hop, works with like you know uh, okay. electronic stuff and drum and bass and dub, you know, yeah. I, I dubstep even. I, I like I, I, you know I, I, I think the guitar is very flexible, but you just got to stop thinking of it like a guitar. Then it becomes interesting. Stop thinking you're playing a guitar. Just, you know, just, and don't ever play anybody else's songs. I think that's a very, yeah. I think that's a, that's an important rule. Yeah. For, well, for, I think for, it is for guitar because so many people have done it. No, I mean, I'm I think not saying that applies to other instruments. I think instruments, whatever instrument you know. you're playing, I think yeah. it's you get beyond the instrument almost. I, I I see what you're saying. It's like don't if you if you're going to see your instrument as this and then see it loaded like a word that's loaded. It's the same <laughs> thing. You, it's a loaded thing. You've got this instrument that has its. Yeah. Repertoire and its character and its its, its protagonist. And I think that's why we like each other's playing so much. I mean, mm. I mean to anybody, right? Nathan is an instant like master. Mm. Like, my skills aren't so obvious, maybe, but it's like oh. Nathan really loves what I do. 
because yeah, in a way I've I kind of yeah. I've kind of got an approach to the guitar which I hope is quite different you know it is it's yeah it's and then and he's got an approach to the flute which is radically off you know off the you know we don't out out of the blooming known universe he's know. a very eccentric guitar player you definitely. know when when you're in the studio uh, working on new new music do you kind of get lost in the music yeah definitely yeah we don't do it enough i think mm. i mean nathan is great for do, do, do you yeah. really enjoy studio time yeah uh yeah it did, well uh, it depends what you're doing i think rehearsal time mm. Rehearsal time when you're coming up with new stuff. That's what you like. And you like it. When you yeah, click yeah. into a new vibe. In like, new, like little new ideas. Yeah, that's always yeah. the best, isn't it? When, we, when we've done that, you know, really great. You know? I think, yeah, that's... And we still, yeah. like, you know, there's, there's a couple of tracks that we've done on the new album where we've actually come up with those at special moment and, and mm. these tracks where we, we developed this thing where the guitar and the flute plays in absolute kind of unison. You know, and it, it does. It sounds like more than two instruments, you mm. know, mm. Wow. and create a yeah. bigger like the two instruments. But trying to make a, mm. it almost makes it. It makes it quite a big sound. Yeah, like a sound wave. That if you get it, it does. Yeah. just the way. You, and if you play, if you put, like the note, I think the um, kind of unusual. So what, what you could describe it as? You're you're kind of like the wave, and Nathan is like the surfer. So you're kind of going in, <laughs> in tandem. I, yeah, think, you I, can I, say think, that. I think we're interchangeable, really. That's a good yeah, metaphor, actually. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to figure out who's the surfer <laughs> and who's the wave. And, may, and maybe, you know, one becomes the other, you know. Yeah, it's kind of both. It's, yeah. I think it's sort of, it's more... Yeah, I suppose more, I'm more wavy, wavy and you're more definitely a skilled surfer. Yeah, because you're kind of flowing. I'm more of a tight tidal there. tidal wave of noise. Lads, I don't and know. You're definitely... I, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> I don't know where the fuck you're going this, right? Um... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't know about no fucking way. Now, anyone, was anyone uh, viewing this really taking that little uh, metaphor seriously? You know, yeah. uh, listen, uh, it's more like it's more like we sort of go one, two, three, and yeah. we start at the same time. Three. <laughs> That's it. It's not as long four, as one of us doesn't yeah. stop playing. Yeah. <laughs> but but you both have to be on the same wavelength. Ah, oh, that's what you were getting to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Right. Oh, <laughs> wave, wave limb. No, no, I don't agree. And uh, so, who's um, who's in the who's the original lineup of uh, Asian Dub Foundation? Oh, that's oh uh, my gosh! There's, there's been a lot of people in the group. I mean, the group they started in like summer '93, and I came in about like February '94. Mm. So I've been in it 26 years. You know, we still have the original bass player on and off. We've got the original DJ Pundit G who. Uh, who uh, runs the sound system and him and Dr. Das, the bass player, they actually started the group with a, a vocalist called Dida, who was with us for about six or seven years. And But they were sort of like a sound system. When I came on, it sort of beca became like a, a band. And we ended up doing sort of gigs we never thought we'd do, we never intended to do. Like big sort of stadium gigs, we get opening for big bands and stuff. You know. Glastonbury and... Yeah, yeah, we did yeah. the Pyramid stage twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, yeah, we did. I mean, we like we we did a stadium tour, like with opening for the Beastie Boys. That was our first trip to America. Oh, really? When was that? Yeah, Ninety-eight. Yeah. Wow. Then we did a tour with Radiohead here. Um, all the big, you know, Earl's Court and all that kind of place. But we see, we never intended to do that kind of stuff. That's the funny thing about Asian Dub Foundation. We never actually set out to do it. It literally, we never chased it. You know. It just, it just, it just happened. It did. It wasn't our intention because yeah. we're like, you know. We're music educationalists, you know, the band was a kind of workshop originally. We were kind of into the education side as well, I still am. What way do you mean education? Well, I mean, the, the group itself started in an education workshop, you know. What, so, what, 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 Dr. What? Das, well, it's like what it was like then, you see. It's not, it's not like it is now when, you know, um, Everyone can be an engineer. There's loads of places you go for studio courses, and you can do it all online, and you can run it all yourself on your laptop. But you know, in the early '90s, uh, it was it was harder for poorer kids to get their hands on the music technology to make the music that they liked. Because back then it was mm. expensive. It was really expensive. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, now you can make music with a touch of a button yeah. on a laptop. But back then you had studio time, and studio time yeah, yeah. was really expensive. And you it was equipment. hugely expensive, yeah. Um, but, you see, but see, then you know all the all the all the instruments to, to to make a drum loop or whatever, you know, like big samplers and to 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 play the beats, you need big drum machines and 
sequences and stuff and and we used to take him you know i i did a couple of things i used to take the sampler and the sequencer and loops and and just into a youth club or something like that or some drugs project or drug rehabilitation project was one of them or youth you know housing pr projects or whatever and just try and get things going you know because because mm. m music is um it's a very one for one it's a very positive thing but it's also you know it gets people uh, like gives them an interest doesn't it you yeah it does it, it gets keeps... people together as well it's one of the great uniters of the world oh, no time, doubt yeah. you know. music is, 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 is you know it's a savior you could say. I mean, it's yeah. saved, it saved so many people. It does, yeah, no, I agree, yeah, it really is. It saved it, it's a good way of putting it. Yeah, mu music saved our life. So yeah. tell me, um, right, tell me, so what are you working on at the moment? Well, we, our album came out, mm. like, three months ago. What's, what's it's the, been pretty vibey for? response, I'd say, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we, we've, been, we've been working a lot. We've done a few videos. We've done, done an amazing thing at the moment, which we've just come out which was just one of these things that you never expected to actually happen like on the on the album we did uh, we did an instrumental that never really had good vocals in fact largely uh nath brought that in on the basis of this track mm. it's got a it's got a really kind of it's a quite a slow tempo you know synthy kind of thing and then but you've got this uh, flute slow fruit breakdown in it and um we built a track on it and we never had a vocal and one day I was just watching Stuart Lee's uh, brilliant coming over here sketch. I don't know if you know it. No. And I, I started. You know Stuart Lee? No. The comedian. I don't like, know. Really? Oh, yeah, you know, he's pretty massive. Is he? Yeah, he's a I'll big BBC to, uh... comedian. But I must admit, I must admit, I don't, I don't know that world that much. But I know this sketch. And um, I put it uh, put it on this track. And I thought, no, they're not going to let us do that. Then we sent it to him. He said, oh yeah, really good. I love it. You know. So you had to clear, obviously clear the song. Yeah, we cleared it with him, yeah. And uh, and then, we've, and now we've made a video with this guy. And it's amazing, you know, he's a sort of sort of like white guy in his uh, mid-50s, you know, big guy, you know. <laughs> he's, he's fronting Asian Dove Foundation, oh, with me I've and Nathan. Oh, I've, I've seen it. Yeah, I've yeah, he's pretty well known. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. like, and, and, and so, so it was a video of Stuart Lee and Asian Dove Foundation, this kind of mick take of, you know, being anti-immigrants, it's a, um, um, coming over here, so, <laughs> this person just complaining about people coming over here, but he, he, taking our jobs and all. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, but he, but he goes back in time. You see, he 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 starts applying this kind of attitude to immigration, going back through time. So, so he starts with the poles and the Indians, and he <laughs> in the song anyway. It's actually really long the original sketch, but then he goes to the Anglo-Saxons. He starts complaining about the Anglo-Saxons coming over here. Yeah. And, uh, and going and, back to the Romans. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, complaining about the Romans. And you go back to like even he goes back to like to the beginning of time, you know. Yeah. But anyway, we've done a bit of that, I and mean, it's it's him oh, I saw, I saw, chatting I saw. over our. What's what's the name of the track? Coming over here. Coming over here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can I can people watch. Oh, it on, on YouTube, YouTube uh, Asian Dove Foundation channel yeah. YouTube. It's on vinyl though as well. The albums. Got a lovely vinyl. Oh, yeah, hasn't it? some vinyl as well. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So you're taking it back to the uh, back to the old school. Well, we're not the only ones, are we? Oh, I mean, I mean, oh. Christ. I mean, you go to any of the big records, album stores or music stores here, and it's like two thirds of it is vinyl again. Which is which is absolutely amazing to see because you you can't beat vinyl. I mean, you know, you've got for, for one, you've got all the nice artwork on it. You know, it feels like you know you've actually got something in your hands. That yeah, you yeah, I think so. Yeah. For. And you know, it's, it's got such a nice sound to it as well. Well, this is the amazing thing. I don't, I'm trying to think of something else. Maybe clothes is the only thing I can think of. But the, the, the only thing, right, which is based on a bit of technology, vinyl, needle, and the technology moves on, but everyone goes back there and actually stays there. And so vinyl's just almost back to where it was, right? It's a, bit like, it's a, it's a bit kind of like flares. It's like they was fashionable <laughs> in the seventies, but they's also fashionable in the eighties and the nineties. That's the only. Of... That's the only parallel I can find. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but I'm not going to put down vinyl as being comparable to flared trousers, okay? <laughs> not, not. I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen what you've got on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, if it's flares, I apologise. I haven't got a pair. Of okay, flares. good. Good. <laughs> you could have been in trouble then. If there's anybody wearing flares out there. Really, 
Yeah, yeah flares are like, just as valid yeah, as vinyl. Flares, flares are cool, we don't mean to offend. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you wear them with platform shoes. That's right, then at least yeah. you're authentic, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Glitter. Glitter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But do you see what I mean? I can't think of anything, right? I, I mean, like, you wouldn't, you, you don't want to watch an old uh, uh, black and white TV, do you? You know, some real retro, you but, know, real obsessives might. But there is a but. There are some incredible black and white films that I still love to watch. That's true, but you, but, but, but you don't care what you watch them on. Well, you want to watch, you still want to watch them. Yeah. On your, you know, 50 inch whatever. There's something physical about yeah. putting yeah. a needle on a record. There and is. And the it's sound unique, of the needle unique, and the way you it? sound. Well, unless, unless you get a bit of dust and then it yeah. starts to jump. <laughs> And it starts to jump, and you see well, what it used to be like is you get used to the jump. Yeah. But you get something regular, and you go, and then you hear it on the CD, you go, there's nothing wrong, yeah. where's my scratch? It's the same with the CD, and it with the scratch, yeah. Yeah, exactly, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's a funny thing, I can't think of another thing that's that's kind of been revived and then become a normal format, you know. And it's, it's, it's really nice to see, you know, vinyls made a comeback. It is, now I didn't care, right? I'll tell you what made me care was when they re-released our second album on double gatefold sleeve vinyl. And I just thought, oh wow. man. Because that one didn't even come out on vinyl. That was one of our biggest albums. It, it, I don't think, yeah, it never came out on vinyl at all. So when it, I see it, on double vinyl gatefold So what, what sleeve. later on you re-released it on a vinyl? Yeah, that's last year. Right, right. It came out in 98. And it was one of these, you know, it got nominated for Mercury and stuff like that. It was quite a big, thing and um, they re-released it and um, and I didn't we really didn't have much to do with it actually and then I just got it and I just thought oh man this is such a beautiful artifact you know just like feeling it you know because the, the, with, yeah. with, the, with the vinyl it's, it's like it's like the whole package you know you've got you've got the vinyl obviously you've got the uh, the artwork the cover and like mm. it's everything you know as I said it's like um, a physical kind of thing you've bought it's not something that gets lost no not that's right no yeah. or... I, I I mean you know the amount of things you do lose in the yeah. digital world yeah 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 and uh, but then it almost like it never meant that much anyway when you yeah. when you lose it you know what i mean that's right. with vinyl it, it, it yeah. means it kind of means something it does but yeah, you see yeah, the thing hard. is with me i've never actually been a person that says oh yeah i prefer it as it was i don't like you know mm. I mean, it was I, kind of you was kind of moving with the time yeah i had no problem yeah. not having vinyl but but yeah. now i kind of i've just enjoyed having our stuff on vinyl so much and it does feel I've kind of had to admit to myself that yeah, you know, it, it's a, it's a better format. But you know, I mean, the thing is, sound-wise, is a funny thing because I'll tell you what I believe. I believe the best, the best sound you're going to get for an artist or whatever kind of music is whatever that artist intended it for, mm. right? So if and you see, like, if you go over like. Like, like in, in say you go to India in the eighties or like Morocco in the eighties, right? Everything's on cassette, and the music is recorded to sound best on cassette. You see, so the best way to listen to it is on cassette. Yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. And like when I went to Mali, like, but, I did. But, but as yeah. as an art, as an artist back in the day, the downside with cassette was the pirates, wasn't it? Because everyone was. Oh yeah, oh, well, yeah, yeah. That. But, but that's yeah, yeah. That, but that's nothing compared to the downside now, is it? You know, what well, I mean? that's, that's like it's yeah. so it's so yeah, yeah, it's so true. not a downside. It's more even yeah. an upside. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you're, you're totally right. I mean, nowadays it's like people are like ripping it off all the time, isn't it? Oh, you don't you don't have to buy it. You know what I mean? Mm. You kind of push on. It's like COVID. You have to push through all these challenges. Yeah, yeah. When you're doing these, music, because because you're you're artistically well we're artistically driven aren't we you know and it's like it's uh just to keep surviving being able to navigate all these kind of like sometimes insurmountable ch challenges you know like this what's going on now you know but but that's that's what you kind of like um that's what you kind of have to do if you choose to be a musician do you agree no if you've got to sort of like take the Take the knocks, disappointments, but then you enjoy the real highs because they're higher than anything else. Oh, I mean, yeah. music for me is just something. I think it's um, it, it, I, and I think I'm. I'm going to speak for maybe both of us here. I don't think it, it's just not deliberate. It just kind of um. I don't know. I always enjoyed listening to it, and then suddenly you just start. Yeah, you just start making it. 
and it was never it was never um a deliberate thing and it's not but felt any disappointment from music i never felt any disappointment how does it make you feel? i didn't feel setbacks either i'd just go and do something else how does it make you feel you know making your own music and creating something that's really that people are going to absolutely love i mean there can't be much things better out there than creating your own your own music maybe creating your own kids apart from that yeah <laughs> i don't know is 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 a really great gig not as good as sexing. What is a, a, a great gig? Uh, is a great gig better than great sex? Is that what you're yeah. saying? It depends who, you, who you're having it with. I mean, preferably you'd like to have your cake and eat it, wouldn't you? Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but it's it's, it's similar to. Uh, it, I suppose it's it's music, sex. It's like. <laughs> the reason you have to keep doing them, the reason you have to keep doing them, is because you forgot. Where's where he going? Like, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Oh, listen, listen, right? <laughs> no, no, let me look. Okay. Follow the point, follow the point, really. You'll get it, you'll get it, guys. <laughs> Oh, you get it, honestly. Here he goes. You got a party mouth. You kiss your mother with that mouth. <laughs> no, no, this isn't. This is deeply philosophical, right? Uh, the reason you want to do those again is because you forgot what it actually felt like the last time. Ah, see what right. I mean? That makes sense. And music, uh, music is really like that. You play a great gig, right? Or even just a great moment, especially on stage. That really is something else. You know, it really is a, a real buzz. <laughs> I'm just but gonna... when you, as soon as you've gone off stage, this is for me, I suppose. No, no. But I think, I, I think I probably generalise a little. When you go off stage, it's like, oh, that's all over now. And things afterwards for a yeah, little while. Yeah, it's funny. Don't it's... seem quite. It's, it, the come yeah. down is quite. It's quite. Yeah, it's quite. It's quite. It, it's, it's, it's abrupt. Yeah, it's abrupt, isn't it? Yeah, you walk yeah, on stage, you, like, you go on stage and you're, there's, yeah. you know, 20,000 people there. Yeah, yeah. And you're doing, you're playing music that's, everything's quite big. The yeah. crowd's big. The sound, the sound, sound is yeah. big. It, and it, so so when, when we're playing right together, if it really feels right. And there's an energy yeah. that comes off crowds when they're enjoying yeah. it. There's an energy that comes off that you, that, that you, that you, the people on stage. That's what you surf to go back to on. your, um, you know. Yeah, that would be yeah. more the wave thing. The wave thing, the, yeah, yeah. the crowd surfing. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, there you go. There's another variant. And talk who's the crowd and who's the surfer? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And talking, talking about you know about highlights. What's kind of been your you know your biggest highlight so far? Well, when I think about me and Nathan, there was one gig that we both agree was the best, wasn't there? Japan. Yeah, that uh, was it. Asagari Jam. Yeah. Asagari Jam, which is yeah, literally yeah. in front of it's in front of Mount Fuji, Fuji. Mountain. yeah, wow. Mount and, Fuji. and the sun was going down, the sky was red, That's and amazing. also this. But what was more, more really good about it, it was just like everyone was just. It was like an A game performance. Yeah, we played really, really well. It, no, yeah, yeah, like there was yeah. no mistakes in the set. It was perfect. The sound was right. It's sound, just, sound was great. Everything went right. Absolutely everything. And and right. I think it was you know, the mountain air. It was, it was the beauty of the place. Yeah, and the Japanese. Uh, crowd as well yeah it's just always wicked yeah yeah you know it's so, so that's, a, that's, a, that's a high point i remember for me and nave yeah and also the thing maybe the the battle of algiers seemed really good yeah battle of algiers was really yeah good. we did a live soundtrack um, to an old film oh, that was really? originally done well, by i think more than, more than that yeah. actually no, was yeah, different well, it was a bit um, different really because yeah i mean my 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 wife is moroccan yeah and um the film's very much you know the injustice of that's you know i mean it's set in algeria but it's you know it's the maghreb right and you've got the the whole um you know you've got the the uh the anazir the the, the anazir flute uh the uh the gaspar and the whole thing's all very much and for me it was a uh, very emotionally emotionally charged because we watched the film so many times sorry what was the film called it's called battle, battle of, algiers. of algiers it's about the war of independence against wow. france by sort of algerian guerrilla but the, the morricone 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 did the soundtrack which was one of the reasons wow. we were asked we've done other live soundtracks we've been doing it for about 20 years now um first one we did is la n which you might know the french hip-hop film did that and then then we, we did battle of algiers we said we didn't want to do it the first time we thought my god we, we can't you know go over any of morricone but they persuaded us we found a way of working it absolutely legit yeah, yeah so i mean it's the same with two sound the, the live sound shows we did but is naif is playing flute alongside morricone's more the, the more orchestral bits wow yeah 
Which is and that is that is really something. You know got, I mean? And I've also got, using yeah. some scales um and then we bash into like some heavy drum and bass yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever and, and North African scales, North yeah. African. No, scales, and North right. yeah, and we've got even some North African sort of drum and bass bits, haven't we, you know? I think you've got yeah. to have a sort of you know element of Yeah, really yeah. But that really, was really you know, good. But, but 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 then it drops to like the or Morricone's orchestration. You got Nath sort of like mapping it, and it's like yeah, it's, in, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. What, what, and we did it in a museum. It's just, it's just such an incredible. It's an incredible is, is, film. Is it, is, it, is, it a, is it a track that's actually been done, or you was doing it, putting it, like performing in front of a crowd? We did it, it's, it's only live, you know, we only ever do it live, there's no... Did you get a recording of it? We've got recordings of it, we never released them. It's, oh, well, I'd love, I'd love I to. I mean, what we'd love to do, obviously, is have an option where you, you are able to watch it at home with our soundtrack on it. But you see, with the kind of films we've got, there are all kinds of rights issues. I mean, mm. you know, we've got La Hen, which, which really has a soundtrack. It doesn't really have a soundtrack, but it's got a, a load of hip-hop tracks associated with it, so we wouldn't really do it with that. Um, then Battle of Algiers, we don't even know who owns it. But the, the other one we did was George Lucas's first film mm. called THX 1138, you know, which is a science fiction film, not like Star Wars, but it has lots of bits that were later in Star Wars, like wow. C3PO's in yeah, it. Yeah. Right? yeah, but it's not like Star Wars at all. It's really dark, really, you know, really kind of sort of scary and sort of in t um, surreal, you know. But, well, um, yeah, amazing. Well, um, listen, we're gonna have to round it up because I know Nave's got a shit. Yeah, sorry, man. I've got. I mean, uh, we, we, listen, we could we could talk forever in the back of the cab. I'm, yeah, it's a great we'll place to have, have a chat. To, <laughs> we'll have to kind of try and do it um, again, like do yeah, it. Yeah, let's like, do. We'll do, do it Yeah. Um, right, Nave, you're gonna uh, you're gonna drop some flute box. I'm gonna drop it for you, mate. It goes like this. Show me the way to Amarillo. I'll be crying tears on my pillow. Show me the way to Amarillo. Sweet Maria waits for me. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's the beatbox. That's, 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 that's how I'm feeling. I'll right tell you what. You know, it, it transcended all the hype. We Do you want another one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Mandy, you came and you stopped me from shaking. <laughs> and it has set you away. Oh, oh Mandy, Mandy, you came and you stopped me. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Right, all right. <laughs> Oh, brilliant.